More than 11 million tons of agricultural chemicals are poured onto America's vast farmland every year. They quietly poison the nation's waterways, from the mighty Mississippi to the small creeks of the West, leaving life increasingly sparse and exhausted. Then people tried something unprecedented. They released a few beavers back into these places, and the unexpected happened. A small natural engineer, once dismissed by humans, began to change everything. With no blueprints, no funding, and no construction permits, they only needed teeth, mud, and a few branches to build structures capable of reshaping entire landscapes. But can this creature really pull an ecosystem back from the brink of collapse? That journey of revival begins here. But this story isn't happening only in the United States. Every year, humanity releases more than 2 billion tons of waste, nearly 50 million tons of plastic, and over 100 million tons of industrial chemicals into the environment, all quietly flowing into rivers and streams, pushing the waterways that once supported civilizations into global decline. Nowhere is this clearer than on the Mississippi, the nation's main artery, draining 40% of the United States and carrying the wastewater of 31 states. Every summer, it delivers massive amounts of nitrogen and phosphorus into the Gulf of Mexico, creating the infamous dead zone. According to NOAA, in 2023, this oxygen-starved area expanded to 3,058 square miles, nearly the size of Delaware, a place where almost no bottom-dwelling creature can survive. Worse still, more than a century of damming, channelizing, and draining wetlands has stripped away nearly 50% of the upper Mississippi's floodplain forests, while the lower Mississippi has shrunk to only about 30% of its original extent. This once life-giving giant has become a machine for producing floods. And the 1927 disaster, which caused damage equivalent to more than $25 billion today, remains one of the most devastating natural catastrophes in American history. As rivers grow exhausted from pollution, the Earth is heating up faster than ever, with global temperatures rising about 0.2 degrees per decade, drying out forests, making vegetation more flammable, and fueling wildfires across the world. In 2023 alone, the United States saw more than 2.69 million acres burned, while the total economic damage from wildfires is estimated at $893 billion every year. From California to Canada, ash falls into rivers and streams, Fertile soil is scorched away, and water flows become more erratic than ever. Climate change intensifies everything. Humidity drops, winds grow stronger, and a single spark can turn into a catastrophe within hours. Forests disappear, wetlands collapse, and rivers, already weakened, are pushed even closer to breaking. Amid all that chaos of force once thought lost to history has quietly returned. From the 17th century through the late 19th century, more than 60 million North American beavers were hunted to near extinction for their fur and castrium. By the early 1900s, many states had only a few hundred survivors scattered through remote wetlands. A turning point came in the mid-2000s, when ecologists realized that the disappearance of beavers was causing streams to dry up faster, wetlands to vanish, and wildfires to spread more easily. In 2008, they launched the Methow Beaver Project to restore beaver populations across the North Cascades, using humane traps, health checks, and relocating beavers from residential areas to degraded watersheds that desperately needed them. The massive wildfire of 2014 opened the door to a unique experiment. Eight pairs of beavers were released into three burned-out basins. One year later, all of them had survived the winter and built more than 15 new dams, turning blackened valleys back into green, wet landscapes in just a few seasons. The flow of restoration begins with the very logs a beaver holds in its mouth. It's no coincidence that ecologists call them ecosystem engineers. Every bite, every branch they carry home sets the stage for a scale of rebuilding no other animal can achieve. Beaver dams don't block water completely. They slow it down, allowing it to spill sideways, soak into the soil, and form new wetlands. Within just a few weeks, sediments trap nutrients, reeds take root, willows and aspens sprout, and insects return in waves of renewal. The ponds created by beavers become oases in dry landscapes, places where mule deer, 
moose, grouse, mallards, and countless bird species stop to rest. Small fish find refuge, insects flourish, and riverbanks are stabilized naturally without excavators or concrete. Ecologists call beavers a keystone species, a pillar that can keep an entire system from collapsing. This power was once proven quite dramatically in the Czech Republic, where a $1.2 million dam project stalled for seven years due to paperwork, and a single beaver colony ended up building a dam in the exact location, creating a pond and restoring wetland conditions so perfectly that officials admitted the beavers did the job for us for free. The rhythm of renewal doesn't stop at the patches of green returning to the land. It reaches deep into the very waterways of these drought-stricken valleys. Since 2008, ecologists have reintroduced more than 300 beavers into the upper Metho River, and within just a decade they recorded 176 new ponds, natural water reservoirs that would cost humans millions of dollars to replicate. On average, a single beaver dam can hold about 1 million gallons of surface water. The first 62 ponds alone stored nearly 5 million gallons, while the entire network now retains more than 65 million gallons of water annually, enough to supply a household in twist for more than 20 years. The benefits extend far beyond surface water. A study in the Columbia River Basin found that 29 beaver ponds added 6.6 .6 million gallons of groundwater, a critical reserve that helps entire regions endure even the harshest droughts. The drought resilience of beaver ponds comes from their unique structure. The dams don't block water completely. They spread it out, allowing it to seep into the soil and recharge the aquifers below. In summer, that stored water is released slowly, keeping streams cooler, steadier, and flowing even during peak heat. Valleys without beavers often dry to bare rock by late season, while those with beavers still hold water, keep grass green, and allow life to persist. The water held back by these dams creates a layer of protection as scientists never expected, a natural shield against wildfires. In surveys across Washington and Idaho, valleys with beavers appeared as fire-resistant oases in landscapes cracked by drought. NASA satellite analysis from 2020 showed that areas with beaver dams retain three times more moisture than places without them, significantly slowing the spread of flames. During the 2015 Twist Fire, many ponds were scorched on one side while the other remained green, and firefighters even used the pond water to battle the blaze. The fire resilience of beaver ponds comes from how their structures spread water across the landscape soaking the soil and preserving a cool layer of mud that creates damp depressions fire can't consume. As a result, beaver ponds act as ecological fortresses in the midst of increasingly severe fire seasons. The resilient life surrounding these ponds leads to another story, one where an iconic fish, once pushed to the edge of collapse, is being pulled back from the brink. Washington is home to seven native salmon species, but over the past 40 years, their populations have plummeted. As the state's population grew 63% from 1990 to 2020, floodplains shrank. Puget Sound alone has lost more than one-third of its natural shoreline, and many watersheds have seen Chinook and Coho salmon decline by 70-90% due to warming waters and streams squeezed by concrete. Hope has emerged from these small engineers. Since 2014, the Tulalip Beaver Project has reintroduced more than 200 beavers into creeks in the northern Puget region. The animals have built long chains of cool ponds, some with 12 or 13 consecutive dams, slowing the flow, providing shade, and producing swarms of insects that young salmon depend on. Ecologists have documented hundreds of juvenile salmon returning to places once written off as dead streams. The rivers being restored today aren't just bringing back salmon and reviving parched valleys. They're also reshaping how people view beavers. Once seen as troublemakers that cut down trees, flood yards, and damaged levees, beavers in many states were pushed to the edge of extinction, surviving only in small pockets hidden away in remote wetlands. Washington chose a different path. Instead of trying to suppress their instincts, the state decided to turn those instincts into a force for natural recovery. Programs like the Methow Beaver Project and the Tulalip Beaver Initiative now function as ecosystem reconstruction teams. 
They respond to every call about nuisance beavers, humanely trap each animal, run health checks, and relocate them to depleted watersheds, places where their instinct to build dams becomes the most valuable resource. In 2023 alone, more than 150 relocations helped create dozens of new dam complexes, slowing streams, adding shade, lowering temperatures, and reopening lost migration corridors for juvenile salmon. And from there, watersheds once written off as hopeless finally have a chance to regain their first rhythms of life. Few people realize that the beaver's journey of revival began with the tragedy of old felt hats. For nearly three centuries, their ultra-fine underfur became one of Europe's most coveted luxury materials, driving a hunting frenzy that wiped tens of millions of beavers from North America. To understand why a single pelt carried enough value to nearly erase an entire species, we step inside the tannery, where each dried hide was received like a special commodity. Every piece was assigned an identification code made of tiny punched holes, ensuring precise tracking for each supplier. Right after that, the hides were moved into a rehydration vat where a solution of salt water and specialized chemicals restored their original moisture over more than 12 hours. And this was only the beginning of a meticulous sequence of steps that would transform rough, raw hide into a durable, high-end material. From these freshly rehydrated pelts, the refinement of this valuable material moves into a stage that demands absolute precision. The hides are bent over a wooden beam or fed into a specialized machine to soften each fiber, open the structure of the dermis, and let the leather breathe again. This step determines whether the treatment solutions can penetrate deeply enough. Right after that, the tanner begins fleshing the hide, shaving off the first thick layer of tissue to remove the coarse material and create a perfectly even surface accurate to the millimeter. The pelt is then placed into a second soaking bath, this time using a carefully calibrated degreasing solution, strong enough to remove all natural oils without damaging the hair follicles. Even the slightest amount of residual fat can cause the leather to rot or discolor over time. Once lifted from the vat, the hide is fleshed again, thinning out dense areas like the shoulders and tail, a critical step that defines the softness, durability, and flawless coloration of the finished leather. The thinned hide now enters the most delicate stage of the entire process, removing the guard hairs to create sheared beaver. The tanner immerses the pelt in a specially formulated solution that loosens only the guard hair roots without touching the ultra-fine underfur beneath, a ratio that must be perfectly exact. When the hide reaches the ideal level of open, it's placed over a beam, and each guard hair and juvenile hair is carefully scraped out from the surface. One wrong motion, one broken hair, and the entire pelt instantly becomes a worthless reject, a loss of several thousand dollars. The precision achieved during the plucking stage clears the way for finishing the leather structure. The pelt is placed into a pickle solution to tighten the grain and lock the underfur roots in place, then shaved again to reach the exact thickness required. Workers move the hide into the wet tanning phase, stabilizing the fibers before drying and tumbling. Inside the rotating drum, powerful cycles break up the stiff fibers, creating the signature softness and drape. The hide is then stretched to open the grain and prepare it to receive the tanning oils. With the leather structure fully open, the material enters the stage that gives it the refined finish of a premium product. A layer of tanning oil is applied evenly and pressed deep into the fiber using a specialized pounding machine, restoring the hide's natural flexibility, sheen, and durability. For sheared beaver orders, the trimmer guides the pelt through precision blades to adjust the length and direction of the fur according to the intended design. Finally, the hide is bleached, cleaned, and tumbled for hours, achieving the softness, smoothness, and luster needed before it moves on to the fashion workshop. Amid the humble dams and the newly revived streams, Beavers stand as proof that nature still holds wonders we have never fully understood. They don't just restore fading waterways, they awaken entire ecosystems long thought forgotten. Every bite they take and every surge of water they redirect brings new life. Birds return, fish find shelter, and vegetation rises again after years of drought. 
It's hard to believe that such a small creature can reshape the fate of an entire landscape. Please like and follow Mandarin Tech to discover more of these extraordinary stories.